and the translation is said that was accurate. So the right was supposed to be interesting. Then I was uh, in the seat right for me, whatever it will be. Now, this uh, particular lecture is different from the theta and the one. It is because of the occasion, because of the sentiments underneath, like underneath. From both the literal side and the speaker. It turns out that all of us in some stage of life or primary stages of life choose a way of living. Some call it religion, some call it force, in a broader sense, way of living. Those of us who call it religion relate that worship. And those of us who look at life, way of life, as work, look at work as well. What Buddha Dev was trying to communicate was that I worship God. Worshipping is a daily one. But in some place of life, you go to places where uh, you relate to your way of life. You call that good. To me, was chosen science as way of life. I am go for a pilgrimage. Whenever I go to Calcutta, I look at the pilgrimage. Why would I call this as pilgrimage? Is that the roots of Indian science, modern Indian science, happened in this. That was about 100 years ago. A little more than 100 years ago. So I think turn back the Pages of this college of leather technology in the Hungary journey. I thought that we are not just celebrating the what we have been able to do in leather technology domain as a college of institution, but look at the celebration of modern Indian science from its very root. But unless you nourish the root, you can't bear root. Therefore, I chose to title this a celebration of modern Indian science. And you might recognize that I broaden the base. Indian science is a whole, not limited to leather technology. It is true that I started as a leather technology as in AC College of Technology. And as uh, Mr. Job was telling, he was part of the Golden Jubilee, he was part of the Vaginal Jubilee, he is part of this uh, Centurion year. So he is a very unique person. But look at this. At the time of uh, Golden Jubilee, there was Madam. At the time of Platinum Jubilee, there was Raghavan. At the time of Centurion Chandrasekhar. So, what one man did the other people have to do from Sela? Now, this is the learning process that we look at. We look at this modern science. I think modern science itself could be perceived to have taken roots from the city of Calcutta. I use the word Calcutta because that has been because of that, not for that. And nourishing the roots to bear fruit to the journey of 100 years is something that we should celebrate. And that's why I call the celebration of the city of science. On the November of 1917, was founded the Bose Institute by J.C. Martin. J.C. You go back to look at the Bose Institute. In this hundred years, it's going more or less at the same time as the college of You would say, this has been eventful and celebration. This, you can look at hundred years as a number. If you don't accomplish anything, you don't celebrate anything. You just get bored, as some of us do. But what has happened in modern science process, lots of important things happen in the city, in this 100 year journey of India in the science city. I'm not talking about the technology, I'm not talking about the, 
Calcutta or Bengal. I'm talking about what India has done in 100 years of in science. I think it is stated here. I would dare say the father of the modern science in India is J.C. Bose. He laid the foundation and seeded modern science in this country. C.B. Norman, born in Tamil Nadu, came here and had a reference. P.C. Ray, in his own words, found happiness in Central Bay. Yemen Saha pioneered in theory of ionization. And he pioneered in institutions by several organizations. It is Mena Saha who really institutionalized the community. He was one of the few scientists who won an election. The, uh, not election of a scientist, as a, as a public uh, uh, personality. Mena Saha really spoke for science in the country of so the world. Say, then the Bosch predicted particles, yet to be detected. They detected Higgs and Boson for in some experiment. But the several particles which are yet to be detected, predicted by Jenna Bosch, all happened in the city of Bangalore. Therefore, to me, is a pilgrimage. And therefore, this lecture is part of the worship that I have for the field of science. Was established in this place as a mature organization. 
to show the British that we could do research without the test, without the government. Indian National Institute of Science did not receive help from anyone. And people do not realize today. Professor C. V. Raman realized that uh, he could not be a professional scientist to make such a professional science. He passed the civil service exam. He became accountant general. Worker director accountant. Made his uh, made money as an accountant and spent his evening time doing research in ISES. And he went to the director and said, Give me a place of work, place of work, uh, in I'll build an enterprise in five years. He did make the enterprise in five years. And the man was so strong that he booked his ticket for the policy enterprise one year ahead of the announcement. Therefore, Raman's work was done. It was truly an inspiring place in those institute. So, Kalkata truly, I would say, was a nursery that several seeds were sown. There are saplings. Some grew from eating trees. Therefore, I would say the root to root is the process that began here. And the college of the technology can have the co evolutionary history with modern science in this country. We look at this uh, college of the technology, two groups at the same time. Whatever books you read in the technology for the science, the course then, the author of the paper, Sarkar, Dhaka, So, it is that most of that happened here. I have read myself, but Sarkar was my teacher. And then we, Abhi used to go to the students' model. And Dhaka will write the uh, uh, textbook with him. Therefore, this College of Leather Technology has a checkered history of not just having a building, not the, the, the formation of the place, but what they did as postman is phenomenal. I talked about the Bayan PM, Bayan Das Bayan's report, and he in fact laid the foundation of Indian leather research in this country. Lo behold, Swami Vivekananda was traveling with Jamshetty Tata and Shekha. And it was the idea of Swami to establish Indian society. So the concept of Indian science was promoted by Swami Vivekananda. So Jamshetty Tata offered 50% of his wealth value at 20 million pounds in 1900 to British government to say that give me the other half while establishing Indian science. At that time, Lord Kassel said 2,500 forms taken from him. The Indian Institute of Science was established with the form with the total money of Jamshed Chitana after the suggestion of Swami Vedanta. He said they are good in civil shows for the preparatory for a science. And it turned out Jamshed Lee declared IAC as a third son and we could to one doctor. When he decided to establish an institute, it's a science that the directorship was offered to Swami Vedanta. Swami responded in a, in a magazine that this is not meant for people like me, it is meant for guys who worry about some aspects of his life. Therefore, the very idea of science established, established from the of heaven. The seeds of modern Indian science I would say that cultivate, not just in the association, cultivation process, cultivate across the country. Therefore, you guys, there's a tribute to Kalkata itself, the way I like to accept it. Look at J.C. Bose as a best cover of the Indian science. It undoubtedly being called the first Indian discover of modern science. Dominated by hypothesis, experimentation, observation, theorizing the doubt. Little do we realize the first person who said nothing leave the universe, energy is coming to matter, that's going to be energy, Siddha, not Einstein. Siddha said that too, all the final is done. But for matter, it will be easy and she's gone. Therefore, the science that we pursue, from an intellectual pursuit, in terms of religious and spiritualism, 
should not translate into what we call modern science. And what we call modern science has this rigor of hypothesis, experimentation, observation, theorizing, and documentation. And this, this involves a first of the, the social system itself. He has talked about unraveling, un, uh, uh, hidden mysteries, underlying the revealing underlying principles of natural phenomena. He really became a model for a natural philosopher and asked questions at a deeper and asked the question, how does nature work? He was not a physicist, he was not a theorist, he was not a biologist, he was not a biologist. You can't categorize him to simply name him. And therefore, it was a very different setting that we gave. In fact, for the younger people, I need to mention, people relate the accomplishments of the scientists by award and rewards and The number of times in the world, the first of the first way I never heard in my life so far. Fundamentally, J.C. Bose was the first one to discover and develop the dream. 1923. Apoli got the Nobel Prize. And Marconi was aware. And the, uh, J.C. was not getting a Nobel Prize does not diminish his work. And does not take away the value of the contribution. And it turned out, Everson made the following statement. It appears the post demonstration of remote wireless signaling as priority over Marconi. He was the first one to use semiconductor junction. Detect a radio wave, invented various what we call non common basic methods of science. He was rarely given the discovered resolution. He said millimeter wave was a non existent for nearly 50 years. And then we're talking about the 100 years of this process. The man said things which have become relevant 50 years ago. That was the spirit of the contribution. And, uh, the several, several instruments and drawings and buildings is built and thoroughly built. If you were to look at the, if you were to go to the Bose Institute today, I didn't tell you. I mean, I didn't tell you, sorry. Too much other is there. You can get that. You would recognize these kinds of paintings, diagrams, and so on. You see them. There's a reason I want to make a point. Last year I was giving a session lecture of and uh, there was a girl who was sitting there in the from Bengal, but married to somebody in Chennai. And she decided to overlook my two brothers and look at what I was doing. So she saw that I was preparing for this picture of mine. And she said, oh, of course. And she was not aware, and she only post she knew was Subhash Chandra. I am not joking. And she was not aware of the work of Acharya J. C. Bose in Anchiramakar. Therefore, on this occasion, when we celebrate the hundred, let us not celebrate the names, let us celebrate the work. Let us celebrate the work that was done at and I think it is some uh, uh, responsible on our part to try and tell these younger people that look, that is a need to go back to the this part. Not because they need to that J.C. Bowes will not gain any one bit because that's all. We will get inspired to go back to But you go back and look at the uh, landlord discovery of J.C. Bowes, millimeter wave communication. Seeding the technology radio for patent five minutes. We are the first one to demonstrate that the electromagnetic waves have a positive effect on the There's a whole new field which is going to today called cognitive neuroscience of music. Cognitive neuroscience of music. That's what we have now. Hundred years ago, it is already a known thing in Calcutta. Therefore, as you look at the roots of this science taking place in this country, I think it is a very big prescription case in gave to the modern science in this country. And on this occasion, the younger generations, the generations to come from the Indian science system, 
please internalize. The science that we pursue must meet an advancement, advancement of science. We should break new paths and go, but it's all but to this country. And we need places for India, for the country, not for the people. We need places for the country among the traditional science. And those are three principles which Jesse was himself described. If I want to look at some of the contributions we gave away from Calcutta, there are scriptures I want to go the visions of those. Every one of these, without elaboration, from those Raman, they have those Sarkar, Pisite, those are all significant of 2018, not when it was done. I'm talking about relevant the context of 2018 on global scale. They pushed the frontiers and every one of them really paid the demand. In fact, uh, it was said, Mercurus, 98, do not be synthesized. Written. PC Ray went to the Kalkadai. Don't If we look at the fields of electrophysiology, the discipline got opened up by the work of Jason. Why is this game? The entire prediction of the new energy path came from the Sajan Ramos. Serial chemistry of molecules, vibration spectroscopy came from Siliron. Now, the power of spectroscopy application today, he discovered the Ramos spectrum in 1928. Today, for detection, for recognizing terrorism, that uh, looking at the, the Terra system, they have done the Brahma Spectrum. Terra Hertz Spectrum. That is the power of science which came from this country at that time. Of course, I am not one who believes in looking at the past and then living the past. You go back and what has happened subsequently. Brahma is just a word, a market of function. Even today, now maybe I'm going to take up to 20 years, 50 years for it to fully realize the potential. Ramachandra came in the process. That was a gene of Ramachandra. The phenomenon by Ramachandra. He performed the work in the top When the double helical structure of DNA was sort of 1954, Ramachandra saw the triple helical structure of Kalajan in 1954. And it was a marvelous contribution, and people became jealous. Then they came back and said, this, 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 this structure is wrong, and he gave a theoretical argument. The whole field of bioinformatics for the world started Ramachandra. Theoretical prediction, theory, procedure, experimentation, is it done? And that happened in this country because of the inspiration that people like Professor Raman and J.C. Bose had given. More recently, Marinda, my friend Marinda Gadar called Nayani Kanpo had done a new algorithm to predict primary numbers. And that has not been exerted by us. That came from Nayani Kanpo. Primary, primary is very, very powerful algorithm. The carbon nanotube will run water through. The water will not exist as liquid in nanocycles. It will be made from freezing water minus water. Now he sensed this and used what the carbon on the the process and that is just kept on. So when we talk about GMO, GMO on the land, that's a contribution from the CSA of land, but they talk about increasing the vitality of seeds by a special pathways. All this is happening now and not necessarily in the past, and that's a most contribution in the last as well. So these are all many professions, the uh, 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 many places for this country. You look at this uh, inspiration from India, the fruitful discovery in stereo chemistry, this is this goes. Each eye, he says, goes by the same, the pleasant behavior that you pair, but not the So very quickly, you concept of vision, which was added to the word at large. The the image, the paper down of the holography, the first paper in the image deconstruction, K 
came out of the year last year, 1974, which led to the given, the, the, all of the people, two Nobel Prize Federation were given to people who came late. This was, this Korean reconstruction came out here. Now there are the predictions of neutrino particles, which one Nobel Prize for Japanese later came from, there came from here. That was the contribution of my Baba. The cosmic experiment of when he came in. Closing the nuclear cell. 1954, Mami Baba delivers the uh, lecture as the president of the International Atomic Energy Authority, in which he talks about closing the nuclear cell. And that talks about how do we take the waste of the nuclear cell back into a subsequent process. The first fourth reader reactor which will provide 16.3 times more energy per unit system was conceived and delivered to this country. And the only pilot plant using thorium as a fuel happening in India. It happens in India. The concept of growth in recycling itself is a concept of Mme Baba and that's all the roots of modern science which are comparable to any of the world and they are getting some. The very time of our science when you talk about celebration of science, we not only we all the time we will discover it. There's a solution dimension to science as well. There are two dimensions to science. And this, when you talk about discovery access, is pushing the frontier of knowledge. When you are talking about solutions, it's a development of knowledge. It's not just a solution, but development of knowledge. So when you talk about this quadrant, you can talk, you talk about low influence and low levels, is a waste of energy and time. And unfortunately, very large percentage of science in the world belong to that quadrant. Low relevance and low elements. Then high relevance and low excellence. It is true that the Swaminathan's work was not built on high science excellence, but a highly relevant to the country's food and problems. Therefore, his contribution is more less than what many other people, even not in Ram, not now. Then there are people who have high influence, other levels. They will mature. And the, some of the works of uh, uh, perhaps the symbols belong to the category. Some of the work of Ramach and Kathleen. Now, what we do, modern science asks for a combination of both high elements and high levels. And that's the uh, 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 mark of this process. And in this in India science, I can quote example. Green Revolution, White Revolution is high level. Millimeter wave communication with JC Bosch. Three stage nuclear reactors of Kamil Baba. Number theory, elementary particles. These are all very good illustrations which come from the Indian science. So the that celebrate this 100 year story of modern science. Along with that of the technology, you can get inspired by those contributions that I have just illustrated on Monday. They talk about the discovery science. For those of you who are young, I will go back and say it focuses on new knowledge not known to others at a particular time. That's an aspect of excellence. He seeks to understand natural phenomena and unravel mysteries of science. It is motivated by desire to be one of the four brothers. And it gives you a fast moment advantage in the marketplace for those of you who want to convert the knowledge into value from And discoveries for public good come with long lead time for finding applications. We're looking at a solution science. It focuses on usable solutions, societal problems. It uses tools which are science-based and as a natural thing. Comes under this category of natural And therefore, there's a value for solving problems related to leather technology as well. If you look at this linear uh, different time space, I already talked about the Raman era, JC Bozira. The current era, we have specific strategic advantages in defense and security, and we are very strong in those areas. And in the future, we talk about global accountants and knowledge base and we have to look at food security, nutrition security, water, sanitation, energy environment, health and so on. The science no longer is working in isolation. 
it has to relate to the social pressures of time and so on. Therefore, the fruits of science, the roots that we may have done, we will be addressing on those security for food, nutrition, and so on. The very modern world, discovering solutions to social problems is a changing pressure on the global scene. Now, when I talk to you about the science, let me say what is the challenge of Indian science and modern world? Because the times have changed. Let us look at the current challenge in the modern world. How to accomplish global leadership? in quality and with a lower density of scientists and really work would not only really not be limited by the investments, thank you and still earn for a space for India among the fresh science. And that is a challenge. You have to accomplish more with less. What Jesse was working Combine the genetic gift of analytical thought uh, based on the inductive logic and lateral thinking with a rigor and experimentation of related logic and gain operative way of And that's what we accomplish and that's what is possible. Now I'm looking at this uh, current India story global landscape, I would say that science was mostly discovery driven in 1900s, when this college was. During 1947, the pursuit of science was that of an individual. An individual The individuals are like Ram and J.C. Bose matched anybody in the world. So there was no necessity for a theory of But the modern science has changed the graph. And in fact, in 1968, India was the first developing country which follows scientific policy in the same. In fact, it preceded the policy of the United States. 1958, scientific work of India preceded the work of Nancy in terms of governmental priority for our political and political science. And we must recognize that uh, there is a trust in science. However, on account of limited investments, limited nourishment of the roots of science which are founded in the 1900s, during the 1981 to 2001, our Indian science Language for many reasons. It is not for want of talent, it was want of priority. Social priority, political priority, and so on. But 2001 to current times, things have changed. It, we have changed in volume, we have become a global player in volume space, but still a bridge player in balance space. How do we address? That question is an aspect that we have worked This is a kind of an exploding diagram of how Indian landscape is shaped. At the time of 1947, the third independence, you go back and look at what we have. We have survey a 250 year old organization by established with the British to find out the Indian resources to be carried back to the So, survey of India served the government and not the people of India. Survey of India was a survey of India, but that was the We had IM, which is a meteorological government. These are all knowledge service organizations. Now, Indian Council Medical Research. The CSAR came in 1942. The IIC came in spite of the government because of the Democratic Party. Then came a few state universities. Three universities were formed. Calcutta, Madras, and Bombay. But there are two institutions, both institutional cultivation. Both were established without in spite of it. They took no money from them. And this was 1947. You go back and look at this in today's talk, we are more than 4,000, 40,000 colleges, 864 universities, nine science departments. 680 national R&D institutions and the full ten equivalent scientists of this country, which is 200, 200, 200, 200. It was 1.3 class and to Delhi. It's today at 1.2. The last one. This is, uh, and we're looking at the global processes. 
you can see the expansion that takes place for the time. So there's a change in the national army space in terms of infrastructure. Now we are talking about it in terms of substance. This is the growth rate of public information in public places. You can see under the 2004 onwards, we can change in the slope and we were we have probably done well in terms of in, two, in 2003, there's a science policy adjustment, which said that we will make investment in science. And by, much by Now, it turned out, during this period that I discussed for 2004 onwards, that the successive government, successive government, borrowed the policy and invested, and the investment into science went up by nine times. Nine fold. And the first scientist investment after the pay commission. Went from $34,000 a year to $30,000 per year to purchase per per And in terms of purchase per per return, it matches up to the United States. Now, the number of food that we could have seen is about 5%. The global ranking of different countries which are shown in the diagram moved from just 15 months before I went to Delhi, today, some of the 30th of course, today we are fifth or seventh. Depending upon the databases in terms of what India has grown reasonably well in terms of the number of our Now that was changed. They go back and look at the Indian science and technology landscape. And I talked about changes that need to take place. The moves were done. Nice moves for the moves. So then you go back and see what kind of people. The people learning from my generation, I call it generation of freedom. Those people are very quite independent, 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 but when the independence is given, what do they do? They never learn. Then there is, I belong to the generation of deprivation syndrome. You have nothing. No race, uh, India means nothing, India cannot do this, India cannot Then came the generation of comparison syndrome. They will say, how oh, America is, how oh, America is England, now how oh, China, how oh, Sri Lanka. This is a comparison. Then came another generation of globalization. Everything, they want to live like the, the Americans and to work like somebody else. This is a process of external priorities. I sincerely believe those of you who are in college belong to a generation of aspiration. A generation of aspiration and therefore that the current generation of Indians open new challenges to the established the early generation. They are being institutions built by us. And therefore you have been the institutions that are built on a legacy and a different grammar, but they have operated differently. Bharat other technology itself is hundred years ago. Cannot, cannot afford to retain the same kind of working that was there some hundred years ago. We need to find relevance and confidence. And that is the challenge of the future, and that is the conversion of food into foods. Let's look at this, what the global situation is. Do we see what we don't have as a weakness, or do we see what we have as a strength? Oftentimes, we end up spending enormous amount of time talking about what we don't have. We never ask the question what we do have as a growth. I'm going to go back and tell you in terms of the global science space, something that we have with the American dollar, something that we have with China and the And how do we leverage it? Not only for ourselves, but also for the Americans and Chinese. Therefore, I'm going to give you a completely different model. The global intensity of research of nations is evaluated with two parameters. They're looking at what is the level of investment of the country in terms of GDP, if you have a GDP hundred dollars, how much of it is used for the hundred dollars into R and D? So they will gross expenditure on research and development as per the GDP, and the global norm is two percent. Number of food time equal scientists per million population. So if you have hundred thousand people, how many people are working full time on research? When you say full time on research, the professor in IIT will be only considered 40% on research. Because he will teach under the course. A professor in IIT is 60%. Professor in IIT is 
Yeah, just not listen, say it's a wrong answer. I am a teacher in a college where they have to teach much in the student, maybe even five years. That number, full time equivalent per million population, the bench, global benchmark is 1200. Now, this is a plot. A plot of uh, the, on the X scale, the percentage investment, on the Y scale, number of families. Then, if you look at this, the, the midpoint is 4,000 sites per million population. That's a country, the Canada belongs to the category, the midpoint. 2% is a number. Then you look, the size of the uh, each globe is the size of the investment of the various companies. The United States invests 4 to 90 billion dollars per year. Okay? And, uh, and they have about 4,500 sites per million population. India is at the bottom here. Okay? Now, if you can take this quadrant, so I'm not actually for particular. If you were to take the American's investment as a requirement for the world at large, if you have American investment as a benchmark for the world, and it's served 7.5 billion people in the world, you would, the world would require, believe me, 8.25 trillion dollars per year. 8.5 trillion dollars per year is, uh, is a G brought the GDP of all nations but four. Therefore, this is a celebrity. This is the investments of various countries 2015 World Bank data. You can see the sixth largest investor of the world is India, around 66.5 billion dollars. And if we divide it by two million two black scientists, it will be equal to the of thirty thousand dollars. We take the four seventy three point four billion dollar of the United United States, divide the number of scientists of fourteen point five lakhs, the thirty thousand dollars on purchase for planet dogs. Therefore, something is happening in this country in the last few years. You can look at this under four thousand scientists and two percent of low resource setting. You can look at the above four thousand and less than two percent fully empty the people in that in that city. You can look at this uh, high investments, more than 2% of the resource intensive, and then the countries like US, both resource and your people. The fourth quarter. You look at this, if you have a this research has to solve problems of people, the people who invested more money, like the United States, US scientists cannot solve the problem of four things. Because it's too expensive. It is, it, is, it is too investment in this. But on the other hand, the policy of the low resource setting can solve anybody's problem because they are the affordable. This is a reality. Now, if you look at this in terms of the sustainability, you will recognize that at 4,000 scientists per million population, at $330,000 of the United States per scientist, for 7.5 billion people, is no great arithmetic, you all have to calculate it. It will see 9.9 trillion dollars. India's GDP is 2 billion dollars. Purchase for parity is 6 billion. Okay. Now, only two countries have larger than 9.9 trillion on real terms. The US is 18.7, now China is now, if you look at this, group of 196 countries, 35 countries are grouped as low income group, 55 countries are low middle income group, 19 countries belong to the category. And it turns out the technologies to serve these markets of 19 countries had to be developed with the low, they were low purchase power. So these 19 countries' investments, requirements, of technology need to be developed with low resource investment. You have too much money, it's not possible. Okay? And, and it turns out that we do a SWOT analysis on these four quadrants. India belongs to the low resource setting. The strength of that investment is the affordability for meeting the needs of the poor. The weakness is the weak base and leadership. Opportunities for resource optimization. Threat is a development bypass. If we take the resource and empty intensive models of the United States, the strength is value maximization. Weakness is affordable. There is an opportunity for leadership, and the threat is innovative to serve poor markets. 
Now, one person's weakness, the other person's strength. And if you marry the two together, the strength of the weakness will come together without valuing each other, it will be a different model. Therefore, countries with low resource setting and countries with ability to value maximize. Really talk about resource optimizing and value optimization, which is not the strength. So, yes, in ST, in fact, a large capital, all the outputs become all of them. There is a time when I have to make a proposal to the government of India to provide grant to private sector for clinical trial for the neglected diseases. And the finance minister was not very happy. Said, Why do you want to give money to private sector for the clinical trials? I said, sir, there is no such thing as a neglected disease. There is only disease support by the neglected people. You think uh, yeah, malaria, tuberculosis, or all that the uh, color has not been stopped. The Vishnadi has said, people who suffer should be ignored by the party. Don't have responsibility. So we grow. So nine plus the based on those kinds of support. Therefore, there is the question of the finding values for public good. Today, without uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, the Chandrasekhar talked about sustainability of leather industry. I am saying the entire model of research and development in the world is not sustainable. Okay? Entire world is not sustainable. So, non sustainability of resource intensive model, we have to look at. It may be therefore beneficial to design an alternate model. Okay? And this for developing affordable innovations, the people centric approaches. Not market advantage, but people centric approach. And in this, the only country in the world which has capability for doing is my mother country, no one else. Therefore, I look at this as uh, connecting the root of science and development to the fruits of the world at large. I talked about 90 nations. Our investment today, as of 2017, is 90% of the 19 countries investments in India. Okay? 90% of the 19 countries in India. Therefore, it is the only country which can serve the other 89. You must know about that. In India enjoys the advantage of, you see, when an Indian does some low cost innovation, they have to stop. When Indian designs something, it becomes unsound. When a Swiss model does it, it is a The words are changed. One model is called a design, the other model is called a design. It is our own complex, the colonial mindset that has not left the Indian science system, that anything foreign is better than India. That is what British wanted us to believe and we believe it. And the largest believer of that model are, unfortunately, scientists. Therefore, that was not the case of J.C. Bowes. J.C. Bowes was not colonizing the country. And therefore, to me, this place was a pilgrimage. Now, we look at this, we are the sixth largest investor. We, advantage, we have the advantage of right, we have the national lab, no expertise class. What more can you ask than those issues? It is J.C. Bowes. It's not for a man to quarrel with circumstances but bravely accept them and we belong to the race and diversity would accomplish great things with simple means. And that statement that J.C. Bowes made 100 years ago. Okay? That was on the inauguration of Bowes in 1970. I think we need to look at that as a model. Having said all this, my younger friends are going to say, Are you are preaching. Are you Somebody is going to ask, Are you as good as what you said? Are you just exaggerated or giving all the difficult work to us and we had a good time when we were the scientist? Right question. I will now talk about two quadrants of inquest of excellence and relevance. And believe me, the total investment of the of, uh, the institute of the Chandrasekhar barracks today, because at that time the government was but 13.75 lakhs. So he is a victim of that low investment. So, okay. Uh, let me tell you that.
that is the theory. In fact, I said, when I went to England to do PhD, my classmate was saying, Swami, you have for a long time. When the reactions were very slow, you will take a long time to make my shots. They said, chromium reactions are slow, written in the Bible of the American chemistry. The first demonstration of chromium reactions can be fast happened in Chennai. Soon after I came back from a PhD in the morning, published from India. We had to build an instrument for it. My supervisor had spent 282,000 pounds to buy that instrument. We built it for 30,000 rupees. 30,000 rupees, the predecessor of Sundashaker gave, 2,000 rupees of my salary. We built it. We demonstrated it. That happened in this country. At that time, the chromium oxidation states 4 and 5 were not known. At a particular time, 40% of the papers published in that area were from CLRI. So they used, my friends in America used to call the Ramasami state of chromium. We said this. I can go back and talk about this. If you go back and look at the chromium 3 into the whole process, papers, or the first papers are asked. Chromium into the whole process. Therefore, I can talk about the first the terms of excellence, what could be done. In terms of design and solutions for R&D, at the top, I was a chromium chemist for a period of time. Then I became a civil servant. But when you look at this chromium, when you mine chromium from the wall, it's subjected to grinding, heating. So some group, small amount of chromium can oxidize the chromium-6. The global method of tackling that orthogenic component of chromium-6 is the time. You have to supply both electron and proton. My experience at the Leather Institute taught me my law is a good example of a proton source and electron source. So we, all we did was remove the iron, use manacola, which cost very small amount of money, fix the problem, and that is a globally available top class solution practiced today in this country. It is it's a very, very, uh, we have global patent on this. But if they did the chromium dressing to a chromium bone processing dressing group, and that will create later on problems with safety and force. Rest of the world tries to immobilize the chromium, which is likely to leach out. What we did, what we did not immobilize. We immobilized another part of the world. Rid of secured landfill charge. Later, I can go back and say every one of these, there were gold papers, gold papers, all came from there. First principle, first principle, not a high capital investment, but they are very effectively useful in different parts of the world and country. These are the solutions, these are the, these are the results I show you. This is, when I was a secondary DSC, one slide I'll show you. I was secondary DSC and I had, you know, I had a responsibility and uh, I given myself eight uh, responsibilities to when I'm in the Delhi. I said democratization of Indian science. That's too much of bureaucracy, too much of pluralism. Uh, then deep bureaucratization of our different Then gender disparities in science. Attract talent to science. Uh, Increased the share of university research. All of these were captured, and there are 70 so new schemes implemented. Indian science project went up by nine times, and this has been addressed. And there are, there are 86,000 under the program for this project. The top one percent school performers, top one percent performance school board, decided to do a BSc MSc in science and biomedical skills like that. They got 80,000 rupees scholarship per per year for five years. Along with the monks, they get eligibility later. 86,000 top of present performance have joined BAC, MSC, this can be last eight years, ten years. All top rankers, any branch assignment, they get a full PhD scholarship, and there's a scheme to provide them an assured the opportunity as well. So, total number of given was 21 lakhs. So, primarily, the Indian challenge for Indian expert approaches is to design gainful solutions at affordable cost for global use. And that is the character which will win India a place for the of science and that's what JC Bose would have wanted.
we can gain global competitiveness in this space. We can look at creative solutions for national problems. We look at the Indian, the Indian sector. Today, is a uh, coming to the end. It enjoys technology leadership. Italy enjoys market leadership. Okay. China enjoys cost leadership. India enjoys technology leadership. In the I know. We will have to get that state, we go back to the It's a unique symbiosis. The only country in the world which has unique symbiosis of academy research industry. And our scientific outputs, today we have about 40% of the kind of publications in weather come from this country. 9% of the patents in weather come from this country. We have therefore a leadership position in terms of technology space, in terms of outputs. The zero liquid discharge that with your friends in Tamil Nadu practicing for 11 years. Okay? Zero liquid discharge industrial enterprise has been notified as a guideline in 2017 in the United States, not for leather products, but for other 2020, we have to bring a norm. We have been practicing it already for 10 years, and therefore we are ahead. And the unit level is 2.7 global average. We migrated from town ecology to do ecology model. And therefore, looking ahead of the Indian leather sector, the human resource of our leadership is not translated into great leaders. These are my observations. We have leadership in the great The value maximization from our materials is below par with the its potential, not related. The its potential. Those of you working in Buffalo, you must know, realize that the government of the power, the project light acts available in the net region of the Buffalo region, in Kanku region of which we destroy during landing and throw away. If you recover that, the carbon the project light act, 2020. That's the value loss. Remain sustainability challenge. Scientific breakthroughs are, trans are transferred to technology assets. Technology assets are not converted to trade benefits, and trade performance does not gain The Indian level sector enjoys potential leadership advantages, but potential has been realized. And that's a working progress. So for the list of prayer particular scientists, seek the Seek God in the universe by observing nature with prepared minds and see beyond what is observed. Discover solutions to socially challenging problems with the population. Agriculture, renewable energy, human health care, all issues of importance. And I can give some suggestions. Affordable technology of precision in the agriculture, water saving agriculture, not and under the agriculture. New materials for harvesting energy from both light and heat at the same time. For solar resource. For us, it's confirmation of change, advanced sensors, new materials for energy in the numbers. The words of those, this trend of thought and constantly to the frontiers of different signs that shape the course of my work in this constant alternation, but in theoretical and practical. You use the word theoretical and okay? From the investigation of the inorganic world to the organized land. The lines of physics and physiology and psychology convergent means. He did talk about disciplines, he talked about science. And he balanced between excellence of ideas and developments and applications. And this is his dedication address, um, 30th November 1970, in the Boston Institute. The past will be reborn. The harder years past, or the college of other technology, will be reborn. For, for yet another nobler future. We stand here today and pursue work tomorrow so that by the effort of our life, our unshaken faith in future prevails. I believe he quoted this in 1970, 100 years later, as we celebrate the central year of the technology. You can recognize his value even today. And even more today than what would have been. 70, and therefore, I look at this as a you know, message of the centenary address, and I celebrate the Indian science with a sort of bad way forward for India.